Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Walt Kosmowski, and if you're a regular viewer of BevCam, uh, you'll recognize me as the host of the longtime BevCam series, North Shore Journal. But enough about that. We're here today in BevCam's brand new Studio B, Auxiliary Studio on Cabot Street. And uh, today happens also to be the day that Beverly has its annual Arts Fest. And uh, we've got some people. We're going to be interviewing some of the sponsors. We're going to be interviewing some of the, uh, uh, the artists uh, to give you a feel of what's going on here at ArtsFest. And uh, what better way to start off, uh, I have with me the executive director of Beverly Main Streets, Erin Truax. And she has brought a guest also, uh, John Andrews. Welcome, folks. Thank you for having us. So, Erin, uh, I'll start with you. Um, uh, how long, this is, I understand, what, the, what, the 21st mm -hmm. annual, so tell us a little bit about uh, Bev Can uh, the uh, Beverly Arts Fest, uh, how long it's been going on, and kind of about the, how many booths you have, and just kind of give us a, an aerial view of what's going on. Absolutely, yeah, so we are in our 21st year. Arts Fest Beverly is produced by Beverly Main Streets. We're a nonprofit based here in Beverly, Massachusetts, where we promote downtown Beverly. We really support the economic vitality of our downtown and celebrate the arts and culture that this city has to offer. So Arts Fest is a fantastic way to do that. In our 21st year, we're fortunate to have 150 vendors today. We'll be uh, running the show from 10 to 4. Um, of those 150 vendors, those were selected out of 250 applicants. So really, really excited to have so many folks that were interested in joining us. Uh, we have a variety of activities. So not only is there going to be art for sale, but there's great kids activities, engagement opportunities, and a lot of our sponsors are going to be here providing uh, services. So it's just, it's going to be a great time. Weather's looking great. It's a really wonderful opportunity to celebrate Arts in Beverly. And for those folks who might need a little snack to perk them up, tell mm -hmm. us about you've got some uh, some food uh, wagons, some uh, food yeah. carts. Uh. Yeah, so we are on Cabot Street, so we have a lot of great restaurants that you can support. Some restaurants are also going to be vending as well. And then if folks aren't based in downtown, they're also in a food court. So we have Joe's on a roll. We have Saw from Soviet Kitchen on Rantoul Street. They will actually be vending uh, just off of Cabot Street. So variety of options. I know the castle is serving up milkshakes, which is probably great for the weather that we have today. <laughs> uh, we have Delphine's, just a variety of really, really great vendors. So there really is something for everyone. Very good. And I'd like to remind our viewers, if you've just tuned in, that we're here at uh, uh, BevCam's brand new studio at 161. Is that the address? Three, three, sorry, three, two. 261. Oh, I'll get it right. Uh, 261 uh, Cabot Street in downtown Beverly. Uh, and we are, uh, we're simulcasting, uh, and we are also uh, live on BevCam's, two of Bev BevCam's three channels. And now we don't want to leave John there by himself <laughs> twiddling his thumbs. Yeah, so, <laughs> Aaron, introduce John and tell us what his affiliation here is with uh, with the Arts Fest and Beverly uh, Main Streets. Sure, absolutely. So Beverly Main Streets is really fortunate to be members of the Creative Collective, which is a really, really great business that brings together creatives across the North Shore. They produce a lot of events themselves as well, but John really has a, a strong purview and pulse on what's happening in the arts community. So I was really excited to have John join us and share a bit because he knows a lot of these vendors. And again, his business is just a really great connector for our artistic community. All right, very good. So tell us a little bit about Creative Collective, John. Sure. Um, so our organization was built to be a support system for creative and non-traditional businesses. Um, and we also have a really strong passion for community building, place making, place keeping, and events like the festival, this festival, we had our festival in Salem last weekend. Um, the critical importance of what this means to the downtown, to the economy, the critical role that organizations like Beverly Main Streets and other Main Streets play in the downtowns. We want to foster and support as much as we possibly can. We've built a significant following over the years, so we're able to really amplify the messaging, you know, incentivize people to want to come out and shop all these local creators and makers. You know, some people don't 
don't remember the fact that just because they don't have a storefront, these are still our neighbors. These are still the people that go to our coffee shops and shop locally themselves. So really fostering that cycle of, of community development, economic development, placemaking, and making people really feel like, you know, we're back completely. Yeah. We're gathering completely. And community building and community gathering around arts and culture really seems to be the path to healing. Yeah. So all of that seems to be I really said, in line yeah. with the mission yeah. of very, Beverly very, Main very, Street. Very so well, wonderful you said, yeah. Now, you, you said non-traditional uh, businesses. Define that for me. What would be a non-traditional business? So unfortunately, some folks that are leaning heavier into the arts category, um, the world doesn't treat them like traditional businesses. So, you know, maybe the guy that makes fake raccoon tails, <laughs> something like that, that you would see at a festival like this. But, you know, traditional thinking people aren't like, oh, that's part of our small business community. Yeah. We think everyone can be part of the small business community like that. Yeah. These people pay taxes, they show up, they shop locally, they have kids in schools. Yeah. So we try to really bring a little bit of equity into the not your typical downtown business, yeah. so but they're still part of that ecosystem. Yeah. But, so would they be like no brick and mortar or would some of them? A lot of them don't. Yeah. I mean, I know that there's some folks out here vending today that have both, yeah. but there's a lot of folks out there that this is the hustle. This is what yeah. they do. And for some of them, this is not their full-time business. They may do this you know, have a, a nine to five and, they, you know, and they paint at night, right? Absolutely. Like up and in the, the French painter up in the garret, right? Right. <laughs> and part of what, what we want is if you want to be that full-time business, if you want to give up yeah. that nine to five, we try to find a path to make that happen. Yeah. So yeah. more opportunities, more connections, small business grants, small business support, all that kind of stuff. Right. Now, you're, how big a net do you throw, uh, John? I, what, by that, I mean how, how far afield do you go from Beverly? Like how many communities sure. do you serve? Um, we have our, our primary focus is Beverly, Lynn, Salem, and Peabody. But I have members all over the state. Uh -huh. um, because a lot of, you know, what COVID did for us is it showed that you could have a lot of meetings and give a lot of support sure, and you don't need yeah. to be in person. And because of the great work that the local organizations do, there is a wealth of opportunities on the North Shore. So just because someone's from Lawrence doesn't mean they can't make a ton of money mm -hmm. by doing the festival circuit in the summer, coming into Salem in the fall. So our, our net pretty much extends... We have some members in Merrimack Valley. We have some members up in Haverhill. We have some New Hampshire members. But I would say 85% of our membership is Peabody, Salem, Lynn, and Beverly. And you'll see that really reflected in this Arts Fest today. You're not going to see a bunch of vendors that are just Beverly-based. We really did cast a wide net. We've been fortunate enough to bring folks from out of the area in. So again, when you look at the vendors that we've brought in, there's a variety of different categories, but we were really intentional in making sure that what you're finding is unique. Uh, there's different offerings. It's not necessarily something you're going to see at every other festival. We yeah. really work hard to ensure that we're bringing new folks in. Yeah. Now, I was curious, uh, your selection process, you said you had about 250 applications, mm -hmm. but only chose 150. Yep. So what, what do you base, what criterion do you use? Yeah, so we have an Arts Fest jury that gathers, and so we are still fine-tuning and we're always updating and constantly evolving, but we really look for diversity in our artists. We consider categories, so if someone, if is doing something similar to someone else, yeah. we, we base it off of that so we're not 150 jewelry makers or you know, you 200 shirt makers. So we do it according to various categories. And then uh, another piece is just making sure that folks are established and are able to set up their vendor station. So we want to make it as, as painless as possible in terms of, of participating. So there's a variety of factors, but again, we use a, a jury with residents, um, local business owners and others to, to help make those selections. So. Um, constantly evolving and improving that process. Right. Now, has, have you ever done a count of how many uh, uh, patrons uh, come through? Does anybody kind of, I know you yeah. don't stand there with a little clicker, but do you estimate how big a crowd you get? We get over 4,000 people, and uh -huh. we're, we're pretty confident with the weather the way that it is. We've seen the Arts Fest last week in Salem. 
festivals continue to trend in the direction of larger and larger. So yeah. we anticipate this is going to be our largest to date. We have a lot of really great engagement activities. Uh, I know we were talking about it before we went on the air. We have our, our first year doing our wellness hub, so a mental wellness hub in partnership with Mental Makeover. Uh, that's a really great opportunity for folks that might be a little overwhelmed with the size and scale of a festival. They can go and um, have a safe space where they can relax, use um, some, some activities to help sort of regulate their emotions. So we really tried to come up with activities that were very intentional uh, and again, drive a bigger crowd. Yeah. Now, how did that come about? Were there incidences that, that caused you to think we got to do something about these incidents? Uh, can you? Uh... Yeah, so we're really fortunate to have received funding from Mass Cultural Council through a universal participation grant. And when you look at trying to make spaces more equitable, there's a lot of intentionality around physical spaces and impairments that might impede someone from being able to move freely, which right. is completely understandable and really valuable. But when you look at it from a perspective of someone that might have impairments, whether it be mentally or social emotionally, there wasn't a lot of intentionality in making sure that folks could feel comfortable. So this is the first um, opportunity for us to do that. We just really saw it as a great way to partner with Mental Makeover. They're in our school systems. They do a lot of really great work. It's a great organization. Uh, and we just really wanted to constantly think if someone is coming, are we creating the most welcoming space possible? And we felt like that was a very easy opportunity to partner, highlight a great nonprofit, and again, just meet people where they're at. So it is the first year. It's a little bit of trial and error, but we're pretty confident that it's going to be well received, and hopefully we can continue to do it in the future. Wonderful. And overall, of course, uh, uh, I've been coming to these since 2003. I think BevCam has been uh, uh, doing this uh, broadcasting from here since 2003, so we have practically as long as you've been here. Yes. But, uh, but overall, it is a very uh, family, fun-oriented, uh, you know, dogs are allowed on a dogs leash, of allowed. course. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. One last question for John. John, wh where do you get your funding? Where do you get your money? Is this so, a member-based organization? Yeah, we're, we're, we're member-based, and okay. we also do um, a bunch of projects. Right, okay. So things that fit in that category of that intersection for us um, one project we did in Beverly a couple of years ago is we worked with the city of Beverly to help them do the artist in residence program that popped up at the old Chianti. Yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah. when there's a certain situation that needs a little bit of like, how do those two worlds, how do the municipal world and the arts and culture world kind of talk together, um, how do we help that make that happen? Great. Okay. Um, so it's a little of both. Right. Well, folks, thank you for stopping by. I enjoyed our, our little chat. We've got other folks who we want to talk to a little bit about. And I've had uh, Aaron Truex, who is the executive director of Beverly Main Streets, who puts this whole uh, arts fest on. Thank you. Yes, and I'll offer just one more, a, a quick thank you to our visionary sponsor, Endicott, who helps make that possible through a monetary donation. We are a nonprofit organization, so if folks would like to contribute, again, entirely free to participate. We're members of the Mass Cultural Council Card to Culture program, so we keep our programs free. We do that as a nonprofit through donations, so if folks would like to give, they can do so on our website or at our station today. Very good, very good. And John, John Andrews, thank you very much for coming by thank you and chatting much. with us. And I don't have the same type of pitch because that was impressive. <laughs> I will say, if, if you're a business in, in the arts and culture space and you're looking for some yeah. support, we can help. Very good. So I'm looking over at the floor director, uh, and uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna say goodbye to you, folks. Okay. Thank you for stopping Thank by. You. And uh, as um, <clears throat> I just like to remind our viewers that um, uh, we're here at uh, BevCam's brand new studio on Cabot Street. And of course, the excitement today is not only the opening of the studio, but it also coincides with uh, Beverly's annual Arts Fest. And we're going to be, we've just had the executive director of uh, Beverly Main Streets, who is the uh, uh, main sponsor uh, and producer of this organization, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, Arts Fest. Uh, and we'll be having some of the vendors come by. And I just to remind you that we are broadcasting live on BevCam's, two of BevCam's channels and streaming as well. And now I'd like to introduce my next guest. And let me see, you are, let me guess, uh, Judy. I am. You are Judy, yes. Judy, welcome. Thank Judy you. George? Yes. Judy yep. George. 
And you were, can you move your seat up a little bit? I can. You want to try to be as close to the microphone as, okay. you, as you can. And um, Judy has a, has a, uh, a booth here, obviously. Mm -hmm. And your booth is called what? My booth is Judy George Art. Judy George Art. And I have to say, Judy, that I did a little bit of research and I, I saw your website. And I, I am just taken with your your paintings. You do, Thank you. You do paintings, and they're very, to me, very evocative. And they really, they're not uh, they're not like a, a picture photograph. You you kind of put a mood into the into the pictures, uh, and that, that's that's a, a tough thing to do. You you uh, and you're self taught. I understand. Mostly, yeah. Mostly yeah. self taught. But uh, did you go to art school? Before? So I went to Montserrat before it was here, when it was, Montserrat used to be behind the North Shore Music Theater. Okay. Um, and then I've studied with a lot of local artists over the years, but I never formally went and got an art degree. Yeah, and, and has this been, uh, how long have you been doing uh, Judy George artistry? So this is my, formally my actually uh, 11th year. 11th year. Um, yeah, I've always worked in art in some way, shape, or form, but this is my 11th year since I began the business formally. Uh -huh. Now, you, uh, do you have a, a, a space outside your studio where you do your art, or you do it like in the basement, in the attic, or in your living room? Where do you do most of your art? So most of my, 100% is done in my home, but my home used to be shops in the front and a house in the back. Okay. And um, when my husband and I got married, the front was like a dining room and a kid's room, and now it's gone back to a uh, shop space and a space where I do lessons. And I actually paint in the, do my paint and formal work in the way back where my guinea pigs live. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> now, I, I, you mentioned something uh, else. You mentioned that you also do workshops and classes. Mm -hmm. Now, is this for any age group or primarily for children, or what's, what's your clientele for that? So I do, um, my regular classes are geared probably more for like 14 and up. Okay. Um, those are my regular classes. However, I do camps for younger kids, uh, about 10 and up. Um, I can take younger children if they're super interested in art, but um, n much younger than that, and I think that they're not interested in what I'm doing. But I, um, I also do things like paint nights, and I do um, something new I'm starting, which is self-care. And it's for people, um, anyone that wants to try art just to relax, but it's also, I've worked in special education for 20-something years. Okay. Um, so I'd like to bring in a lot of people uh, um, maybe on the spectrum or where they're not comfortable in other places where they can come in and we can work together. Not so much lesson as just a safe, creative space. Yeah, and, and, and it's amazing that uh, um, the, the interplay of the mind with art or something more, I would say, I, I don't want to use spiritual in, in that, I, I want to use it in a sense that, that it works your body, your, your your body as well as your like like you have uh, uh, you have uh, service dogs and you have mm -hmm. comfort dogs that go into hospitals and I've heard stories about someone who has been uh, not said a word for six months and uh, and they put a little puppy a little service I have dog a in their therapy dog and I do a that therapy too, dog yeah. yes and and I know that we had uh, my wife and I had a therapy she's passed away since then the therapy dog not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, and uh, she used to go around to the hospitals yep. and the clinics and things like that, and, and uh, it's it's amazing oh, how... I what, bring my dog to a lot of different places, but one of the places is Danvers High School, where I'm just retiring from this week. Um, but he goes in, and you can see the kids change. Like, they'll, you'll, I'll see him in classes, and their faces are down, and, they're, and they'll see him in the hallway, and they'll go... <gasps> There's peanut, and it's the same yeah. with the staff. You see that it's, the, the, it's like flipping a switch, and I bring them to a lot of places like nursing homes, um, yeah. and what a difference between the the uh, people, the residents, and the staff. Yeah, so. and you know because uh, uh, animals are so non-judgmental, and what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. there, you don't have to worry about a, about some ulterior mo yep. motive when a dog's waving his uh, tail and 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 putting his paws up. Uh, you, yep. you know that that's that's real. It's and genuine. It's exactly. genuine. Yeah. Now. Uh, do you uh, typically uh, uh, attend uh, different kinds of fairs like the, the, the Beverly Arts Fest? Is that part of uh, how you promote yourself? I do some, but I do mostly uh, holidays. I don't do it a lot in the summer just because I, I don't, outside is so tough with the weather and you don't know what the weather's going to be like. So I do indoor um, fairs mostly, I'd say November, December, some in October. 
Um, and I do Arts Fest because it's Beverly and it's Arts Fest. And, do you live you know, in Beverly? Yep, all my life. Yeah? Oh, all right. Now, when you, when you do these workshops and these classes, how many, how many people normally would you get in a class? Um, I have had, like, if I, the ones I do at my house, I've had up to six, but I don't like that many. I like to keep it between two and four because okay. I can do individual instruction. I don't work in a... Um, I don't have a syllabus. Today we're going to do this and do this and yeah, this. Yeah. I like to work with, I start everybody off um, one way, which is basically looking at it, how they do a still life. Yeah. And that only tells me where they are and where we need to go. Yeah. And then I can work each individually. So that way I don't have to try to gear every lesson for yeah. everybody. I'm very much in the um, individualized sure. mode. I, mean, I think that that's my special ed background. <laughs> right. Well, when, when, you, when you do with that creative stuff, you can't regiment that. It's yep. not like an assembly line, like building a mm -hmm. car. It, it's so individual. Yeah, you got to yeah. meet them where they're at, and you got to encourage them where they're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good, very good. So uh, we took you away from your booth. Yep. <laughs> and so so uh, Judy George, Yep. thank, thank you very you. much for, for coming by and talking with us. And we'll let you go back okay. to your booth duty. Right. And I'm going to stop by before because I... Thank if, you very much. I'm sure that your paintings look a lot better in person than they do on, on your website. I hope so. But I was very impressed with your Thank with your you. Work. Thank you very much, Nice Judy. to meet yeah. you. So it was Judy George who has a, uh, a booth at the Beverly uh, Arts Fest. And just to remind our viewers, we are uh, broadcasting on two of BevCam's channels. And we are also uh, streaming live uh, with this podcast from Beverly, BevCam's brand new Studio B, Studio Annex. What, what do you call this, uh, uh, Liz? What is, is this? BevCam Downtown. BevCam Downtown is the official. Yeah, I see Rob Chapman, the executive director, nodding at me. This is called BevCam Downtown, and it's a wonderful, beautiful space. I wish we would have done it under my command, but <laughs> kudos to you, <laughs> Rob. Well, and I have now with me, you are? She's, I'm just here for emotional support. She's okay. I'm Eva from EMC2 Crafts. EMC2 Could you move up a little bit so yeah. you're a bit closer to the, oh. to the microphone? Yeah. So EMC Crafts, and, and your name again is? Eva. Eva, and what's your last name? Cooper. Eva Cooper, okay. So, uh, and you are? Mallory, her mom. Mallory? Yeah. Okay, Mallory. And so, tell us uh, uh, about EMC2. Uh, two, e or EMC2 it? Crafts. Yeah, you know, it's not EMC Squared, right? Well, like, you can say either. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know the EMC Squared is a very, very famous equation, yeah. don't you? Okay, so was that on purpose it that is you on did purpose. that? All right, okay. My, just and, lots of people say it wrong, so we yeah. kind of go with either one. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. great, yeah. My initials are Eva Michelle Cooper, so that makes EMC too. Oh, wow. So, and then my business is the second one, so it creates the square. Wow. I, 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 yeah, you are so precocious. That, <laughs> that is unbelievable. Yeah, that, that's 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 wonderful. So, what what? Tell us a little bit. Give us a snapshot of what what you're about, uh, and how how you started this up. Now, how old are you? I'm 14. 14. Okay. So, tell us how EMC Squared uh, uh, came about. So, it started last August where I started creating slime because I have OCD and I started pulling up my hair due to large amounts of stress, and I also have ADHD. So that slime was my way of fidgeting, and I wanted to share that with other people. And then I moved to more crafty things, so it started off as EMC2 slime, and then it moved to EMC2 crafts. So I crochet now, which is my part of dealing with my OCD, and I sell it to other people who, you know, they might need, like, slime to stop doing whatever they need to do, like with pulling their hair, maybe picking at their skin. So it's usually all helping with neurodivergent people. And then I started selling crochet because that's what helped me. Yeah, so instead of pulling their hair, they're crocheting, yeah. right? That, yeah. that energy is going into something creative, right? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly why I started you know, doing it. I have to tell you that my mother was a fantastic crocheter and, and she, she, was, uh, she did needlework. She was a... Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you call those people that do uh, um, embroidery, cross stitching? Knitting. Well, she 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 would do um, what do you call it when you when you do altering? She worked in a in a well anyway. But she could she could upholster a couch. That's how that's well, how good she could with the piping really nice. and everything. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So and now, how long have you been doing this, Eva? I only started in January for my crocheting, but last August I started up with slime, 
Mm -hmm. I've always been looking into like arts since like I was very little. I've been doing craft fairs for about that long. Yeah. Um, we did. We my parents are authors, and I'm also an author. So oh, yeah. uh -huh. we went to a bunch of book fairs, book signings, and that really started up with me wanting to do craft fairs. Yeah. So then I started doing the crocheting stuff last January, which is also my birth month. And so I started doing that, and now we're here. Wow. Now, you say your parents are artists. What kind of art do they do? Um, they, I'm sorry, art, 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 authors. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. I do, like, fantasy. I haven't made a book in a while, but my parents do sci-fi. Oh. M Mallory also yeah. does mostly sci-fi. My parents do romance. Yeah. Okay. And what do you do? Um, I have one children's book when I, when I made when I was around, like, six and my parents... You got a late start, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My parents had it illustrated and written into a children's book, and then I have a short um, chapter novel where it's um, a fantasy book, and it's very similar to Percy Jackson because that's what I really liked when I was that age, and I haven't written a sequel yet, but maybe one day. Yeah. You know, they have a program at, at, the, at the library uh, called Monday Mornings at the library, and uh, I, I know the folks that run that. Bevcam's been over there uh, a, a lot, uh, and maybe maybe they could have you on as a, as an author and talk about how you other uh, books. Now you have something here. Uh, maybe you could hold just hold it up right here so the camera can get that. Now tell us what this is. This is a it looks like a giant uh, uh, a strawberry. Is yeah. that what that is? It is a giant so, strawberry. So and and you knit this whole thing? I crocheted it. I'm sorry, it's yeah. crocheting. Okay, I, I have to. So what's the difference between knitting and crocheting? Um, there are multiple differences. Crocheting is the same with loops, but they're connected from the bottom and to the side. So you do it in this motion, but with knitting, you also do with two needles. And there's a reason why it's very different from knitting. One of those reasons is that a machine cannot crochet, but it can knit. Oh, yeah. All crochet wow. items you see are, you know, handmade. And if you see them in the store, either they're fake crochet or had they had someone crochet it. Wow, I'm more comfortable with E equals MC squared than crocheting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my goodness, it sounds so complicated. But uh, that's, that's absolutely wonderful. And uh, uh, this is probably your first time here at the uh, Beverly yes. Arts Fest. Yeah, this is now, their first time. Yeah. Now, you live in Beverly? Um, we live in Danvers. Area. In Danvers. Oh, yeah. just right next door. Yeah, exactly. Right next door, right? So what would you, what would you say to other, uh, uh, other youngsters that, in your age group about if they have a creative impulse, a creative bent? How, how, is it, how, how best to, uh, to uh, uh, get that going and get that in motion? What would you, what would you advise them? There are a lot of places where you can find cheap stuff that you can probably buy with your own money. So go thrifting and don't let anybody tell you that it is not a job. It will become one if you spend enough time on it and work, but it will not become a job immediately. You have to work with it and have a lot of time with it and it will create this thing that's long lasting. There's so many people on YouTube who are so inspiring who've had their business for years and they're now just hitting the peak. So you really have to wait and just keep going with your craft and not get disappointed with anything that you're getting. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, uh, there's no right or wrong in art, is there? Yeah, because no it's right. so, so individual and it comes really from the heart and, and from your, your creative spirit, doesn't it? Yeah, there's, there's like no way that this, a machine can make this, so that makes it even more personal that somebody had to handcraft this and now you have their handcrafted work. Yeah, and, and uh, how much would you be selling this for? Um, okay. It's twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. I have a two hundred dollar giant strawberry that's like oh, half the size of me. Really? And yeah. now what's what's inside here? Is um, it like foam or something? It's polyfill, and I use yarn scraps to try to reduce my yarn waste. Because yeah. whenever you create a crochet project, there's going to be so many scraps of yarn, so. You can just reuse it into stuffing. Oh, this is wonderful. You know what? I'm going to buy this from you. I'm going to surprise my wife because she loves strawberries. Okay. Thank you. So just so put much. so so put it aside, or I'll, I'll, I'll you can put it there, and I'll, I'll give you twenty dollars. Okay. All right. Is that is that a deal? Yes, that I is. Hope, a deal. I hope I have twenty dollars. You can always come by and pay with card, gift card. <laughs> let's see. You, t you take credit card? No. Yeah. Let's see what this is. What is this? There's a twenty. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. So there. 
made a sale with you. Sale and, on air. Okay, sale on air. Very good. No, I'm very, very impressed, uh, Eva. Is it Eva? Yeah, it is Eva. 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 So I'm very, very impressed. And you have siblings? Uh, no, I'm an only child. You're, you're an only child. Okay. Well, uh, Eva, thank you very much for, for coming by. I'm, I'm very impressed you. Uh, with you, and I'm, I'm sure that you, uh, you have the ability to inspire uh, folks to, to continue doing that and you have your you have your uh, comfort to person with you and that that's that's because you you're uh, if you do things by yourself you get a little bit uh, yeah. yeah so so this person helps to anchor you I hope you're not nervous of me are you no, no? okay you very, seem very nice I seem very well that's <laughs> I haven't gotten a compliment like that in a, in a long time well again thank you very thank much, you much. Uh, thank you for coming by and good luck to you uh, at you. the at the Beverly Arts Fest thank, thank you. you thank you thanks for okay, bye bye. Well, that was uh, that was very enlightening, and I think that's uh, that's kind of a lesson not only for young people, uh, but for everybody who has a creative uh, creative bent. Uh, uh, explore it, because uh, as we said, there's no right and there's no wrong. It's such an individual uh, thing. Art is, uh, and I like to uh, remind our viewers that we are here in Bevcam's uh, studio on. Uh, 261, I got it right that time, right? 261 Cabot Street, this is Beverly Downtown. Did I get that right? Okay, I gotta learn. This is brand new, brand new facility, uh, just opened, and I think this is, this is the initial, is this the initial day that we've been doing this, yeah? All right, Rob, you wanna come down and sit down? Talking to you off camera. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, this is Rob Chapman, and Rob is the executive director of BevCam, and I want to congratulate you on on putting this uh, together. Uh, yeah, we tried to do it under my regime, yeah. uh, but we did, we just didn't have the money yeah. to do something like this. But we this is absolutely. So, so tell us how this came about and uh, and uh, what we're looking at here. It's a it's a well, huge space, a beautiful space. It is. From the beginning, when I first took over for you, when I took as on the executive director job, uh, the board has been talking about we want to um, expand operations. We want to get downtown on Cabot. So you know we've been looking for a year and a half, and then one day I got a call from Liz, who's our community engagement manager, and said the place next to Delphine's is opening up. And I'm like that vitamin store, the New Leaf, and there she's like, yeah. I said that's a nice spot right there on the corner of Cabot. You know that's really where a lot of the activity on Cabot happens. Right. So, and with right, everything we'd been wanting was, you know, enough square footage, uh, some window space so we could let people know that we're here. Uh, so I, I came in and kind of grabbed it that day. Yeah, you know, did you really? It was you, pretty, you, we were pretty aggressive. Like carpe diem, right? Yeah. You don't want to. You know, I even brought them some money and said, you know. Here's my earnest money. I got $6.35. <laughs> and we were serious. We want to be in here, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we got, uh, they let us know. They were very, the landlord was very excited. That it was a community-based nonprofit that was going to be coming in, so yeah, yeah, uh, that yeah. was really kind of uh, I think helped in our favor as opposed to another store or something like that. So, yeah. um, we're you know um, nonprofit that wants to serve the community, so they really kind of like that. Uh, so we got it, we got the lease, we signed it, and we spent most of the winter uh, renovating it. Uh, you know, yeah. you know, it was a, a lot of work had to be done into it to kind of, and we're still doing some. We're getting the new windows next week. Yeah. Uh, the sign is coming soon. Yeah. Yeah, so, All right. Very, yeah. And you even moved your office down I here did. to, to you know, show I, the commitment to the area, right? Well, you so, know, I felt kind of um, hidden back there at the school. And yeah. I wanted to get my face out there, let people know if they wanted to talk to the executive director, they could just stop yeah, at any right time. Yeah, right here. They can just walk yeah, through the door. Some, yeah. yeah. So I thought it was really kind of nice. So, you know, we thought about, you know, <clears> we do still have the operations at the high school. So the staff we have uh, out there, Chris and Michelle are out there generally. Uh, and... We thought about where the best place to put Rob and others. So right, right. Now, now for those people who don't know, now Bevcam has four channels now. We do. We got we gained a, a high definition channel. Right. So that's something that's something relatively new. That is we, new. We, we we struggled. I know we, <laughs> we struggled for years and years to try to get that into our contract, our agreement. Yeah. You know, every other channel you watch is high definition. Yeah. Right. So we're sort of the last people that are. Yeah. Know. And when people turn that in, they or turn. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Showing your age, showing my age. <laughs> yeah. so, it's click. It's like yeah, this now. Yeah. So, uh, so tell us about the, the high def channel. So you're picking and choosing certain programs. Yeah. So it's not. Them. You know, typically the three channels, the standard definitions, we are, are sort of separated between public, educational, and government. Right. Uh, so we were like, what are we going to do with the, the high definition channel? So we yeah. wanted to really kind of showcase 
you know, there's stuff that's really kind of prime footage or uh, content. You know, we're talking about the, the, the football games, the high school games, uh, and sports. Uh, the municipal meetings, if you're ever trying to watch a municipal meeting and they're showing a PowerPoint presentation, yeah. and you try to read that on the standard <laughs> definition, <laughs> but when you're, it's in high definition, you see everything, yeah. all the tiny numbers, so you kind of know what the city's planning and yeah. stuff like that. So Absolutely. we look at things that really sort of, uh, that are local, that is produced at BevCam, that are uh, really deserve uh, sort of that high definition and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we pick and choose from what we have at, at, at BevCam and, and sort of put it on. Uh, you know, at one point I started calling it uh, BevCam Prime or something like that, but we just called it the HD channel. Yeah, and uh, now you're you're you are a membership organization. We are. Yeah, so yeah. people can, uh, and I know that the rates are 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 uh, how would you say ridiculously low. I mean, for what you get as a as a member of BevCam, you yep. get so much. You get the ability to yeah. to, to produce programming. You get training. You don't have to pay for any materials. It, it's really, it's, it's like a no-brainer. It's, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. You know, we offer you know, training. We now have these edit suites down here in this location. Studio, we have the, the big studio at the high school. We have, we're planning on a smaller studio here in this space. Um, all sorts of things, equipment that can be signed out. Uh, um, it's really just a, a, all for you know, a pretty nominal yeah. Uh, fee yeah. as a membership, which hasn't changed in 20 years. Yeah. We're, th we're looking at changing that, but maybe yeah. increasing those rates, but yeah. it's still a pretty good deal, yeah. I think. And I didn't, I didn't realize that until you just said it. You've got editing suites over there. I didn't, I didn't know you had yeah. yeah. Now, if somebody wants to come in here uh, and uh, they should just consider it that, that if they're a BevCam member, they can do anything here that they can do in, in the main studio. Yeah. But now, if they want to do something like a podcast like this, they just uh, they just call in and reserve space. How would that work? Yeah, exactly. It would just be like you know I'm I'm, I'm thinking I want can I schedule the, the podcasting studio down at two sixty one mm -hmm. um, for this time and if it's free we say yeah we make sure we have staff here to, to help you with a. Uh, setting up the technical stuff and, and go ahead and start talking. Yeah, and I know that the students at the high school are doing more and more of this kind of stuff. Uh, we hardly, uh, you know, I mean, going back even five years, three years ago, there was, you know, nothing like this. But I think I think the, the COVID lockdown and, uh, and uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, virtual, uh, working virtually and so forth, and uh, that's really changed a lot of lot of way people do business and communicate, especially right. So yeah. you're able to, to do that a, kind of stuff. It's a different. It's, there's been a shift, you know, a noticeable shift in how people do stuff. So yeah, very good. Well, I, I my congratulations are in order. I I, mean, I, I know what it takes because uh, I've been in your seat. So I have to congratulate you on a job very well done, uh, Rob. And you've got a great great crew. Uh, my old friend uh, Chris Harvey back here doing the technical, the, the technical directing. Day. He's he's one of the best, absolutely. No, it's been we've had a, a big shift in, in staff at, at Bethcam too. So uh, you know we've been able to hire Liz as our community engagement manager. We've now brought on Amanda, who's our education uh, manager. Right, so that's right. a lot of the work that she's been doing that you talked about with the students. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and then Michelle is our content manager. She's the one who does all the scheduling for the oh, channels. Right, right. Uh, they're they're a great crew to work with. So yeah. I'm glad to be here. Well, I want to I want to do a shout out to Liz, who's who's on the other side of the cameras there taking pictures. But uh, but she's great to work with, and uh, she communicates very well, and uh, she does a great job making yeah. sure that the visibility. Oh, look at that! She's blowing me kisses. <laughs> So, very good. Well, Rob, thank you very thank much, you. and congratulations. This is a you know, wonderful operation. All right. and Am I leaving stage, and you're going to close it, or are we closing? Uh, uh, well, I'm looking for a signal from Liz. Should I uh, close out? Uh, close out? Okay. All right, Rob. Well, you can, you, I guess you can sit here. All right. right? Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for, for watching. Uh, my name is Walt Kosmowski, uh, the regular host of uh, North Shore Journal, which uh, has been running on BevCamp since 2004. So, uh, yeah, 20 years. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm very pleased and honored to be here to uh, kick off the brand new uh, uh, Beverly on Broadway. No, Beverly downtown. <laughs> I'll get it right. <laughs> BevCam downtown. Uh, and uh, we, we are, we're going to be doing this uh, all day today, right, Liz? Nod your head. Yeah, so there will be some other folks coming and sitting in this chair uh, doing some podcasting. So uh, for right now, I'd like to sign off and say thank you for watching uh, and keep watching BevCamp.